This morning we're going to be talking about the about Convex C40, which is going to go out to all customers, whether they have the DC license or not. Overview of what we're going to cover is Convex 8.1 compiler environment, a common C compiler, also known as a portable C compiler, Convex C30, uh, in case customers have Convex C30, Convex C40, is going to cover common C language, aka Kernicke and Ritchie, first edition, the ANSI C language definition, POSIX, and the only thing I'm going to talk about with CXTA is CXTA 1.1 is now supported in Convex C4. I'm uh, going to talk about, if we have time, new compiler options, predefined symbols, and we will definitely talk about Convex C4 impact, because there are some impacts that is not readily clear from reading the documentation, or most of the documentation. To be able to use Convex C4, you must install the Convex C and compiler environment from the OS utility state. If you don't, you don't have all the libraries and include files set up. When you do install it, it will move the portable C compiler from bin CC to bin PCC. It will also move all the associated files with the portable C compiler to bin to user lib PCC. Uh, and it will install all the header files because you have a new set of header files on the tape and new set of libraries. After you install the OS 8.1 compiler environment, it is highly recommended to install the C4.0 installation tape. That's because you do not have the bin, bin CC anymore. Is this compiler environment required for anything else other than C4.0? Basically, the compiler environment has all the POSIX standard and header files, all the C and C header files. All the header files are basically ANSI, POSIX, and backward compatible. Uh, and that's and that's a major change and that will affect almost all it probably will affect almost all programs that are out there as far as compiling goes. It's a thing to if you go, you go all the way. You don't necessarily have to install it in the compiler environment, but if you want the features of 4.0, you must install the compiler environment. Common C compiler. This is also known as the portable C compiler. came from Berkeley. This is being phased out with this release, X release of the OS. This compiler will not be sent out. It is provided in this release to generate the kernel. Currently, the kernel is not generated with the Convex C4.0 compiler. It will be in the next release of the operating system. And also to assist in moving customer code to Convex C compiler, because there are some incompatibilities. What does it mean, uh, currently the kernel must be built with this compiler? Currently, the kernel is the kernel is built with this compiler. It is not built with... One of the goals for 8.1 was to build the kernel with the Comic C4 compiler, but they did not reach that goal. So the current compiler that they're using is then PCC to build the compiler. So, you do, so when you do a regen, you have to use this compiler. To make scripts already know to use this compiler. That's one of the reasons why this compiler is still on the system. Well, there was some co code generation differences, not with generating in different code or bad code. It was uh, the Convex C4 compiler generated code that uses more temp space, and there was problems with the kernel with with the added temp space, which is using up stack, which would cause the kernel to abort, which is not pleasant. Uh, and that's the reason why uh, they didn't meet this goal, but it is a requirement in the next release of the OS to use the 4.0 compiler or some derivative, derivative thereof.
the next release of the operating system is Duck, whatever OS version that is. Really keep saying whatever that is. Is it going to be anybody but 9.0? I don't know. I, I work with compilers. If we know what the next version is of the release and why, why they change names with uh, in the OS, I have no idea. There's a note in the impact field here that says Convex OS version 8.1 is built with the slash sys file in the, uh, in the Convex C compiler environment. For this reason, you cannot perform a standard system if you do not install the C compiler environment. I guess you have to ask Andy about that, because to my knowledge, they did not, were not able to build the do a system with, uh, with 4.0. Convex C 3.0, for those people who have Convex C 3.0, it is currently invoked as DC for Vector C compiler. This will be moved to user Convex old DC. It did changes in the header files to support ANCC and POSIX, the old DC, old DCPP, which is a vector C preprocessor, cannot handle these header files. <clears throat> it will be moved to user convex old DC, DCPP dot old. The new VCPP will be set with a 4.0 tape to be installed as user convex old DC, DCPP. And this will work with the new compiler. I should say work will work with the old compiler if those customers have VC on, on their system. Since the documentation for Convex C4.0 refers to how to access the old version of C4.0 is for the 4.0 compilement, it's incorrect for accessing the old version of C3.0 compiler because it changes the GNIST organization. Standard libraries have changed. I'll, I'll talk about this later. Uh, so you must use capital D underscore underscore old names from the, <clears throat> from the command line to access the old libraries for 3.0. To invoke the compiler, even though this line should be concatenated on the first, this form is to use the old libraries, and this form is to use the new libraries. Font mole, I believe, from the new libraries may be ANSI. I have to check on that. Yeah, I'm going to get this information to the customers so they know what's going on. The release notes are stored on the system, so <clears throat> even though the system administrator is maybe the only person who has a hard copy, everything is documented in the release notes. Uh, and see, every, I have a page on how on what all the documentation there is that you can get for what I'm talking about today. Uh, but basically, this information is talked about in the release notes. Yeah. You're being kind of a busy guy here when they release this 4.0. Yeah. Because of 3.0 and not using the right one. Right. But this is how, basically, to use, the reason why you want to use the old compiler is, for, is either you find a bug in the new compiler, or, uh, but most of the bugs we, that you, are critical in the old, with the old compiler in the dash PCC mode, it's been corrected. Okay, what's new with 4.0? A new compiler, new preprocessor, new libraries and library organization, new header files to support ANSI C, Common C, and POSIX 3.1003.1, a new Lint, and a new bin LV to support some of the features that the compiler needs. What about uh, C++? C++ is... Uh, it's a separate product uh, that won't be uh, it's scheduled to be released later this year, but it won't affect as many customers since it is new. It will C plus plus one O will will need the four O compiler, but it is a separate product. Four O currently supports the following common or classic C language definition, aka Turner and Ritchie first edition. ANSI C language definition, POSIX, and TXPA 1.1. These are all, all but the first are new features in the line, in the compiler. Major compiler, compilation modes. There's four. First is backward compatibility mode. We use the flag or option dash PCC, and this refers to supportable C compiler language definition. 
which is probably what most customer codes were compiled with. Font mode, which is dash exe, which is ANSI C POSIX with Condix extensions in both ANSI C and POSIX. Such things as extensions are long, long int, which we added to the line, which will be supported in ANSI mode. Third mode is ANSI C and POSIX, which is denoted as STD for standards. And the last mode is STR, which is strict ANSI C mode. Some customers have vectorizing C compiled now, and they continue to have the full features of vectorizing C. Other customers are going to get a downgraded version of that. Okay, there's and they won't have all these options, right? Wrong. Wrong. Okay, there's two. There's two two versions of the compiler. There's a full optimizing compiler and a partial optimizing compiler. So far, all the features I'm talking about, everyone will get all these features no matter whether they have a full or partial optimizing compiler. Partial optimizing compiler will go up to scalar optimization of dash O1, and full optimization compiler is everyone who currently has the VC compiler license will get the full optimizing compiler of 4.0. Different name, but same features. So there's really three compilers then, right? Yeah. Two versions of CC and a PCC? Okay, a customer will only see two versions of a compiler. CC or VC, or CC or PCC. If, if the customer did not, does not have a VC license, they will get the partial optimizing compiler or scalar optimizing compiler, as it's called in the documentation. They will only see two compilers, that and PCC. If you have the full, if you have the VC license, you'll get the full optimizing compiler and also PCC. So you only, they're both the same compiler and system for one has the optim, higher optimizations disabled. They're all built from the same source code and system for PCC. How do you have a PCC mode? Why do we need the PCC? How about a plan? Common C, C language, dash PCC. Backward compatibility mode of the compiler is not 100%. That means not 100% compatible with the common or portable C compiler. This is because you're, we're not bug for bug compatible with the common C compiler. I'm going to only cover some the three major problems with the compiler, but all the all these problems that are all documented. All the differences are all documented in the concept, convex and CC concept document, which, which talks about almost all these features I'm talking about now. First major difference that I've seen a lot in a lot of different codes is you cannot do casting on the left hand side of an expression. Does everyone know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about casting? What is casting? Casting is when you say X equals, in a sense, you're coercing Y to be a double here, and this is called cast to X. Portable C compiler, you can say, I'm just using zero because I need something there. And in a portable C compiler, you can put a cast over here. This is in legal code because a cast does not yield, in the C terminology, an L value, and the L value is an expression which denotes an object that you can manipulate, in this case, store information into. This is in legal code. It's undefined by the language. So doing it causes problems. It could be interpreted many different ways, and we decided to tell the person that it's an error instead of trying to interpret it in a long fashion, which is probably a lot better than interpreting it in a different way. The other major problem is evaluation order. With this expression here, a sub i plus plus equals b sub i, evaluation order in the C language is undefined such that with both compilers, with this statement, you can get tips. You will get different answers. From KNR, and from ANSI C, if your code depends on evaluation order of expressions, it, it is undefined by the language. This is a simple case 
Another case of a violation order is saying something like this, which I've seen come in from many different people, will give you different values for X. Because you can evaluate this first or this first, it doesn't matter. The way you see evaluation order problems is, is getting different answers from the from PCC and convex C dash PCC. And these these are two of the major reasons why you need you still need for a while to keep PCC around. Last major difference between PCC and DAS PCC mode in the convex C compiler is uh, undeclared functions x equals Undeclared functions such as if I just say x equals this without saying say int g, it de declares the function g as returning int. If I done through this, undeclared functions if they return a short int or character will automatically be widened to uh, an int with the PCC compiler and convex C with dash PCC, this is not the case. The only way to catch this is using Lint. Lint will complain about this problem. These are all co coding problems that you'll see or can see and going between compilers. Basically, if you don't declare it, let's see, I can't remember what ANSI C. But basically, G is defined as an int. Yeah, if you don't declare a function, if you don't declare anything and use it, it is default type is an int. Uh, so if I use it here, the compiler expects the return value to be int. So it could just store, instead of writing the type, such as doing sign extension, it will just store and you can have, if you have garbage up in the uh, it always returns, the return value is always an F0. So if you, if it thinks it's the int and only has, you know, valid information here and garbage up here, you'll get wrong answers. They found this in building some of the utilities. And this is, it, it, the compiler expects an int, so this is basically, if they're doing this, it's uh, undefined code. Now I'm going to talk about some of the aspects of ANSI C, why ANSI C was, came about. One, there was no namespace that was limited to who could use what namespace as far as programming goes. In KNR, if an implementation decides to say use a function called XYZ, a customer could not use that routine. So one of the things they did in the ANSI standard was define a namespace that the standard would use, a programmer, the implementator can use, and a programmer can use. Standard namespace is, there's a standard set of header files that are associated with ANSI C. If you include any of those, all the functions that those header files define are reserved to the standard. Also, they have re reserved a bunch of names for future use, starting with str, is, to, and mem. All external symbols that start with an underscore is reserved to the compiler implementators to use. So if a user is using, say, underscore x, y, z, and a compiler person also uses the symbol XYZ underscore XYZ. The user program is non-conformant in ANSI C because this symbol is reserved for the compiler people and the programmer is forced to change this code. Another thing that they did in ANSI C is cleaned up a lot of loop codes in the language left by KNR1, such as in a lot of cases in KNR1, they leave things they don't even talk about whether something is undefined or not, or whether it's implementation dependent. So it's like it's your best guess of what should this compiler do. They define certain things such as evaluation order of sub-expressions to be undefined, calling sequences, argument 
evaluation for call for seventeen call calls as undefined and cleaned up cleaned up a lot of holes that you could basically in KR there's so many holes in it and they're big that you can drive a Mack truck through. One thing they didn't do in K and R one was they defined an answer to define a set of functions standard set of functions that can include those header files for a hosted environment. There's two environments for ANSI C. A hosted environment is basically the convex. A non-hosted environment is, is basically an embedded system. Where a hosted environment and non-embedded environment would be like a, a real-time box to do avionics on a fighter. And that would be a non-hosted environment. And so these send functions are not defined for that, but the language is. They also added restrictions to the language that will allow optimizers to, to generate faster code, which is always good so our customer applications can run faster. People always like running their code faster. They only added a few new features to the language in places where it's needed. Function pro prototyping, which is the current way of defining a function is, this is the prototype version. We took this from C++. One of the reasons why they added this was basically one of the biggest problems in any programming language is function interfacing. To do extra type checking when you're using prototyping, when you declare functions, so if you get mismatch arguments, the compiler will warn you about or give you errors depending on the type of mismatch. They added constant and volatile data type qualifiers. Constant says this data type is a constant for compile optimization. Volatile <coughs> basically says this data type will change, can change without knowledge of the compiler. This is basically used for writing device drivers in ANSI C. Void we already implement in our convex C but we now implement void, a void pointer, which is a generic pointer in ANSI C. Okay, enumerated data type is a data type that you come from Pascal, that they got from Pascal, to say, is basically you define your own data type. In this case, color, or co and you define blue, red, and green. And so you only so if you def define a data type of color, the only values it, it will have is blue, red, or green. Those are the only valid values it could have. It's just adds an extra abstraction to your algorithms, if you like. And the differences between ANSI C and Common C, or KNR, is, is three, three basically changes. Changes that prevent compilation of the code, or can prevent compilation, semantic changes, and header file changes. Five new keywords have been added to the language constant, enum, or enumerated, sign, void, and volatile. The use of these words in the wrong context will or can cause error messages, so those are easily detached. Next change is the numerals 8 and 9 are no longer octal digits. KNR and KNR1, they, they define 8 and 9 to be, as seen in this context, 0, 9, and 0, 8 to mean octal values 1, 1, and 1, 0. Why they did this, I have no idea. But it's, it's there in the man, it's there in KNR1. So if you, you do use 8 and 9 as octal values, you'll get error messages. Uh, why would anyone want to do this? I have no idea. Another change is that they made is string literals such as are now no longer modifiable. So if you're trying to write into string variables, one, they will be put into read-only memory. So if you try to modify a, a string literal, you'll get, at runtime, you'll get runtime error, most likely a segmentation fault. Uh, and if the compiler can figure out that you're modifying string variable at compile time, that will give you a syntax error. It is not <coughs> permitted to convert a pointer of any type other than void to a pointer of any other type out in explicit cast. If I say N A double N star A double star B, I can't say 
A equals B without getting a syntax error. Unless I say long float is no longer part of the C language. Most people probably don't have never seen long float. I never have. So it's not part of the language. Biggest change I've seen in this part is external declarations have block scope. Okay, this is your file. And KNR1, when I declared A as external, it would have file scope. And NCC it only has block scope, so it's only valid in between the two brackets. This will get you syntax errors if you decide to use A down here. PCC node, this is valid in NC node. A is undefined here because it's only valid in this scope. The next change is formal parameters of a function may not be typed up be a typed up name. You know, this is going from LC to NCC. So, this, so most customers probably won't get into this, these problems unless they're trying to convert the code to NCC. In this case, the compiler will say ABC here is a type def and give you a syntax error instead of thinking ABC is a variable name. That's because it is still in the scope of the type def name. Because since, it's from, since NCC supports prototype, it doesn't know whether this is a variable name or a type def. That's the reason why you get an error. In the previous uh, I have to get an error message is here because A is no longer a variable. So you probably get fancy, you declare it in this block. If you use it in this block, it's fine. But once you leave the block, A is no longer in scope. And so when, you, when it encounters A again, since it doesn't have any symbol table information about A, for this scope, you should get an error message when you encounter it here. There are ways to call to call functions with variable number of arguments. The only way to do it in NCC is using prototyping, and the prototype would look like the three dots indicate here in the language that the function receives a variable number of arguments, and therefore tells the compiler that you can use a different calling sequence. So it knows how to pick up all the variable number of, of, of arguments off the stack. And if you don't do this, you will get a syntax error. There used to be, in KNR, they defined the keyword entry as a keyword and reserve word. It's no longer a reserve word in NCC. ASM which has never been part of either KNR or ANSI, is also not a reserve word. Uh, we will accept this as a convex extension to do inline and semi language in NC, which is what the kernel does in some cases. Next thing that causes problems with ANSI C is accessing non existent members of a function or a structure. That will give you a syntax error. In KNR, they said you can do it. NC declarations are invalid except for mutually referencing structures or unions. So, but the only way to use an empty declaration is for basically making a recursive reference, such as almost anything else is not legal. Uh, declaring zero length arrays is invalid. There are some codes that some people do use. They a sub. This is in label because the compiler cannot figure out the size of what A is, and it has to. You could use this. This is. Some people use this for dynamic allocate, you know, for looking at things as arrays uh, and do dynamic memory allocation, but this is in legal and ANSI C. No type specifiers may be added to a definition or declaration that is using a type, type made by type def. So if you say type def and a, you can't say unsign a.
next thing is there's a certain number of predefined macros that cannot be redefined or undefined in ANSI. I'll talk about those later. If you do, you get syntax error. Schematic changes that, <coughs> that will, these, the compiler will, will still accept and they're probably worse than the compilation changes because it changes the meaning of your code so that you will now get wrong answers in, instead of before. The first change is character constant 078 is still valid, but since 8 is no longer a knock character, it will now mean com the combination of the characters octal 07 and 8. This is a multiple character sequence, co character constant sequence, which is defined in ANSI-C. Another change in the language is the escape sequence. Slash A now defines a bell, and slash X defines a, he a hex character sequence, a hex constant character sequence. So if your code is using those, you get different answers. Basically, if you want to define something in hex as a character sequence, you Slash X0C, I believe, is uh, a line feed. I can't remember. I think that's 12, so that's a line feed. Or, yeah, line feed. It is neither required or forbidden that, one, these can be separate strings. It could be the same. And it's undefined by the language whether they're the same or different. So code, some code depends on that art do depend on that they're the same, so they're, you know, the behavior can change. This sequence of assignments, which is defined in and in KNR1, and basically the old form of the plus equals minus equals assignments are no longer part of NCC. And in KNR they did mention that they were going to be obsolete. Another one is floating point numbers. Operations with floats will now be performed in 32 bits instead of 64. KNR said, which is a, I could never understand, said that all floating point operations will be formed in 30, in 64 bits, no matter whether it's float or double. ANSI standard says all floats will be done or can be done in 32, all doubles will be done in 64. This saves a lot of overhead. So if you're saying equals A plus B, and all of them are floats, A and B must be converted to a double, do the operation in double, and then convert the answer back to a, to a float before you store it into X, which is a waste. That's one of the best benefits I've seen. But you can get different answers because of this. This is page 4-13. Functions that depend on char, shorts, parameter types being widened to ints, or folks being widened to type double may behave differently. What this means is if I call x with a and say a is float, in KNR, when I define A as a float, as a parameter, it will be promoted to type double quietly. So from the compiler point of view, when it's compiling this function, A is a type double instead of being a type float. Now with ANSI C, when the compiler generates it, it looks at A as type float. But in the calling sequence, when you call X, this parameter will be will be converted to double. If we're not talking about prototyping, it will be converted as double. Then inside, it will be converted back. If we're not using prototypes, it will be com converted back to float. In KNR, it will always stay as double. This does, in KNR being double will make the code run slower because it will can inhibit optimization. I will talk about this later. But this is one of the things, differences, that if people are depending on A to be a double in this case, or if we're talking about instant 
carriers and shorts would be ants. This is not the case with ANSI. They will be those types. That will be promoted, be converted to that to ants or doubles, and be converted back to that type instead of being promoted to that type. This can be a problem. As I mentioned before, Piler may not reorder expressions containing successive identical commutative or associative operators, such that if you have a plus b plus c plus d, in K and R, the compiler is free, even with parentheses, to reorder this in any fashion it wants. Under ANSI, it must avoid evaluate this from left to right and the order it sees and it must evaluate the parentheses. This has the side effect that if you're compiling in strict ANSI mode, if you're doing a sum reduction, this will not be vectorized in ANSI C. In the default mode, extended mode, it will be vectorized. Uh, this is a limitation of of ANSI C that you can't reorder, but in extended mode, since we are having extensions, it is not quite, it is ANSI like, but not true ANSI C. Uh, and I will be talking about some of the optimizations later. Empty declarations such as X sub X, sector sub X, is no longer harmless because it can hide a definition of an X that exists in an outer block. Such that if you say and x equals zero, in this block, when you refer to x, it always refers to this x, and not this one. Okay, one of the things they added in an ANSI C is a sequence called pie graph which is basically used to, I did not mention this, it's probably something most people won't run into, but it's a character sequence of starting off with two question marks. There's about a dozen tie graphs that are listed in the ANSI manual. These will be interpreted in string constants, character constants, and header names, and will be replaced by the corresponding tie graph symbol. On suffix integer constants such as 12, this type will depend upon the contents, context of which it is and to be what type it is. In KNR, this constant will, would always be an int. In ANSI, it may be a char. Actually, no, it wouldn't be a char. It would be a, sm uh, a short, an int, or it could be a long, depending on the context that it's in. And it would never be an unsigned. And Nancy, it would be. You have programs dealing with unsigned arithmetic. Behavior can be different with conversions than with between K and R and Nancy C. And from the Nancy C committee, they considered this is the most serious semantic changes in the, in the language from going, going to Nancy. Shifting, when you do a shift, if B is long and you're saying shift A by B, it will no longer, in K and R, it would make the result of type long. If B is long, this is not the case in ANSI C. If A is a short, it would, in K and R, it would make the result a long, and ANSI, this result would still be a short, regardless of the value of, of B. A couple of big changes in the preprocessor is if you have comments in K and R, the comments are re were removed be from the, in the preprocessor before it's passed on to the compiler. In ANSI C, this is comments are now replaced by a blank. This has a net effect that if you have A slash star star slash b and a macro definition this would this would paste a and b 
together in the NCC, this will not happen. To do the same operation in the NCC, you would have to say A, B. This is a common thing that people do, do, do use with the preprocessor. Another problem between NCC and the preprocessor is if you say something like this, an NCC, this will mean the, the character constant A, and PCC, it would replace whatever the parameter is here. A, what, if this was a character string, it would do the same thing. There is no workaround in NCC for this version. For this version, you could say, and that will make A a string. Both of these features are used a lot in, in, in the preprocessor, so this can be problems. Function like macros in, in the preprocessor can be recursive, but they will not be expanded recursively. Which can be, if people are depending on that behavior, can cause problems. Next section is header files. First header file that are changes between NCC and, and TCCC is ctype.h. The macros is ASCII to ASCII underscore to upper and underscore to lower do not exist in ANSI C. They are available in fast EXT mode, which is in ANSI like mode. The next header file that changes is math.h, the single position math functions that we define s fabs, s square root, s sign, s cosine, on and on are available in backward compatibility mode. In extended mode, most of all the functions in math are available as math like math, math function like macros. In this case, it replaces common fast math.h that we've been using with vector c to allow vectorization uh, and parallelization with using these functions. The next header file that has changed is signal.h. Following macros, sig, sig cat. Let's see, SIG, CHLB, SIG CAT, SIG HOLD, and signals in process do not exist in ANSI mode, but they do exist in backward compatibility mode. The biggest change in sent STD.h is functions, function like macros, file num, and, and the function FD open, which is file descriptor open, are POSIX functions are not ANSI. So in ANSI mode, you will not have the use of these functions. And I do know people do use these. Probably the biggest change in the header files is strings.h is no, no longer exists, and, it's, and you can use the function string.h. Miscellaneous uh, in the header files is functions create, open, close, read, write, else and unlink all POSIX functions and are available in POSIX POSIX modes. If you are using signal handlers, you must change the fault behavior before you process the signal to SIG default for that signal that you're processing. Probably the biggest change with header files is that it's no longer legal to declare a standard function if you already include the standard header file that has declared this function. This code is non ANSI standard because the standard function can be defined as function-like macros. And this, in this code here, if they are defined as function-like macros, it will cause a syntax error. POSIX and what it means in 4.0. You have two modes that you can get POSIX in. That's, the first is that EXD, which is the default. It will define the macro underscore POSIX underscore source. If you're compiling in dash STD, you must define the macro yourself because POSIX is the, the way POSIX is defined, you must define that symbol to be a POSIX compliant program in your source. And you can do it either by on the source line or in your source which is found defined. Most system calls have changed in the following areas of return values, structure being passed, and how they work. The most common affected functions are these listed 
and really to find out what has changed, you should look at the appropriate document. The biggest problem that you'll find is if you're already gone to 8.0 from 7.1, going to 8.1 won't be a problem. If you're going from 7.1 to 8.1, then chances are most of the deposits, but uh, some of the deposits, but problems in going to it will be problems. And the best place to look at them is to find the problem areas are in the deposits and tax documents. And there's not really many areas that cause problems. New compiler options. Following four compiler options that I'm going to go over are interpreted first regardless of position in the command line. Staff EXT, which says for compiling in extended implementation mode for anti C POSIX recompatible libraries. This is the default mode. STD says for POSIX and ANSI C. SCR is strict ANSI mode. And uh, TCC is verbal C compiler language definition, which is basically the language that we base Convex C3.0 on. Each mode has a different set of libraries. Aliasing, from optimization standpoint, is we have basically two or more paths to the same object as in or two or more names for the same object as in alias Smith and Jones. Aliasing is probably the biggest thing that prevents optimization in C because C has pointers and with pointers the compiler does not know what they're pointing to. So if you're using pointers in your code, the compiler assumes pointers are pointing to anything which means they can be pointing to the same thing. There are three standard aliasing algorithms Standard, cautious, and worse. Worse is what is used in PCC mode. And what it means is that it assumes all pointers are pointing to the same object, regardless of what is going on. NCC decided to make aliasing better. It means it says only pointers of type P can point to objects of the same type. This means a float pointer can only point to floating objects and not to integer objects, where in PCC mode, Port pointer can point to anything. And this increases the aliasing, which also, this decreases the aliasing, which increases optimization. Because there's been a lot of code that we've gotten complaints from from customers. We've gotten a lot of code of this fashion where the compiler will not vectorize this loop because n is a pointer, is an int pointer, a and b are pointers. Because A and B are pointers, and you're modifying A, and product does not know that A and N are not pointing to the same object. Therefore, it assumes they're pointing to the same. Since N can be modified within the loop, and product does not vectorize this loop because it doesn't have a known stop value. And in ANSI C, this loop will be vectorized uh, automatically. The only way to, to vectorize this loop is to rewrite the code. Two more aliasing options, alias, arrays, underscore, args, and pointers, underscore, args. First one treats our arrays pass as parameters, as arrays, not as pointers. C defines all pointers, all arrays pa being passed as arguments to be treated as pointers, not arrays. This will also increase optimization. And the third is new which says treat all pointers passes as args as arrays and not as pointers. That definitely goes against the language definition, but this does does increase optimization. But if you lie to compiler with this option and get wrong answers, you deserve them. Code generation. There's a lot of different things that cause that are different between the way ANSI view things and PCC and this is how you can somewhat write ANSI code and and still use some of the same errors as before. The first one is extern, which tells the compiler how to treat external objects. In PCC mode, external objects are treated as basically common blocks, aka as in Fortran. In ANSI mode, common externals are basically 
treated as a ref death model. It can only be defined once and referenced many places, where with common block models you can define them many places and reference them many places. If you want to convert your program to ANSI, you can use, but it relies on basically the common block model, you can say external same, and that will help progress you in porting your program to ANSI mode. The next set is strings. In ANSI mode, strings are read only by default. And so you have two options, string read and string read write, which makes it the string read, read and writable so that you can, if your code depends on writable string literals, it will put them in data space instead of text space. String read only mode is the default in all the ANSI modes. Dash friends tells the compiler how to interpret statements like this for optimization. Ignore says, which is the fault in PCC mode, says, ignore parentheses, evaluate the expression in any order. Dash explicit says, we honor parentheses and do the evaluation in the order that we see it, which also can inhibit optimization. And plus it says, honor parentheses, and regardless of anything else, we can do it in any order we want. Basically, impl implicit is basically the way Fortran does it. Basically, in KNR, they said, well, we will just do it any way we want, which is stupid, because you can run into numerically numeric problems with floating point numbers. Use of floating point operations. This is a new flag. There's SP ops, DP ops, SP constant, and DP constant. SP ops is basically a, a synonymous with the DAS SP flag with 3.0 compiler. This flag is still supported, but we added the name float dash SP ops, which makes it more readable. This tells the compiler to do all the work in 32 bit do all float work in 32 bits and not double. This is the default in ANSI mode. This is not the default in PCC mode. SP constant and DP constant tells the compiler how to interpret floating point constants. If you have a constant of 3.1415 and C, this will always be evaluated as a quote, as a double position constant. Evaluating this as a double position constant when you're doing floating point work can inhibit optimization and it will also slow down because you have type conversion. So SP says, const says, interpret this as a floating point constant instead of double. This loop will not be vectorized no matter what compile option you use. Well, and with the old compiler with 3.0, this loop would not be would not be optimized or vectorized with any compiler option because some reductions will not you cannot do a sum reduction if there's a type conversion in it. The way the compiler would interpret this, without using any options, this O2, this would be float, this would be float, and this would be double. These would have to be converted to doubles, therefore you can't vectorize. If you use that FD. Okay, the compiler says, okay, I will now do this in float in 32, this in 32, this is double. I have to do a convert, therefore I can't factorize this loop. Now with the dash float const, it says, I will now interpret this constant as a float, therefore I don't have to do any type conversion, and I will factorize this loop. That's the biggest advantage of having of this compiler option. In strict ANSI mode, this loop could not be uh, vectorized because it would have to do things in, in the same order of evaluation because the way we do sum reductions, we do the evens, the odds, and do the partial, which is changing the order. A sum reduction is not vectorizable in standard C. In the, it is in extended mode, it is automatically vectorized. There's a whole new list of predefined symbols that 
the C compiler and the preprocessor that defines in in 4.0. Convex underscore convex underscore source and underscore POSIX underscore source defines certain things in the header files that are needed for either POSIX or convex extensions. Neither of these two symbols are defined with dash EXT or not defined in any other compiler mode. There's two new macros to, to define what compiler uh, floating point mode you're in, convex float, which is native mode, and IEEE float, which is IEEE mode. The predefined symbol cap underscore underscore STDC underscore underscore is the symbol defined by ANSI to say that this is an ANSI compliant mode. If this symbol is not defined, you're not in an ANSI compliant mode. This symbol is only defined in STD and STD and strict mode. You cannot undefine this symbol in these modes. Underscore underscore lowercase stdc underscore underscore is defined in all modes but that TCC. This means that the language that we're compiling is in a ANSI-like mode. This is used in all the header files to determine whether they're ANSI or in backward compatibility mode. The new symbol that is used is underscore underscore no inline. This is defined so that the standard functions are not defined as macro-like functions. This does inhibit some optimization. And the new standard math.h header file, all the, uh, I shouldn't say all, but most of the intrinsic functions in there are defined in as macro-like functions such that they can be in line. Underscore, underscore, convex C is defined as identifying the machine that you're on, in this case, the convex. Convex DC and Unix are still defined in backward compatibility mode, but they are made obsolescent with convex, with underscore convex C and underscore Unix. And these new symbols should be used instead, but they're around for compatibility reasons. Then you have underscore underscore line, underscore underscore file. These identify the while and file number that you're at in compiling code. This will tell you in your code what line, if you determine for debugging purposes, tell you what line, what source file you're in uh, for debugging messages. Also, these symbols cannot be undefined with either dash u or pound undef. undef. You have date and time macros, which are part of ANSI C, and again, these macros cannot be undefined or undeath. Yes, there is impact with Convex C40. The font mode is ANSI C. Biggest problem here is most people do not know what ANSI C is. Second problem is libraries and LV command. Because of the changes in the libraries, using LV to load programs will be broken and we will not tell you how to do it, which will may get customers happy mad, but I'll explain that later. And there are other problems with other non-related C utilities that I'll also talk about. The font mode for the following, for all the processors, CC, CPP, and Lint is ANSI mode. As I said, in most cases, people do not have ANSI C code. They should use dash PCC to get the password compatibility mode of the PCC compiler. There's two ways to go about this. One is either edit the command line to include dash PCC or set the appropriate environment variable. And there are some environment variables that you can set to change the modes of the compilers. Each utility has its own environment variable. 
CC options for CC, CCP, CPP options for CPP, and LINT options for LINT. The compiler will take the options from these environment variables first. If you use to set CC options to dash PCC and then use dash EXP on the command line, EXP will override dash PCC. Command line options will override, override environment variable options, but if you don't use environment, if you don't use those options on the command line, it will take those from the environment variables. This is probably the workaround that you tell most of your customers to do because this way they don't have to change your make files or other things to get the same effects because who likes to edit make files? I don't. Library changes. LibM, which stands for the math library, is now going to be an empty library because all its functionality is in the standard libraries. Because basically all the math libraries routines are now part of the ANSI standard. And we broke it up. Development has broken this up into the standard libraries. The new library organization has changed. It will break all make files that are using bin LD to load but the only example where I can think of where clone break an LD command is if you say LD dash R dash R options tells it loaded to do a partial load. And this is about the only place it won't won't break that is still valid to use LD. The new library organization will not be documented. Okay, there's four language modes, two floating point modes, IEEE and native. Two machines, C1, C2s. Between these, there are 16 combinations for the libraries. If we add debuggers and loaders, debuggers and profilers, the combination adds up to 96 different ways of loading C programs. Valid ways of loading C programs, I should say. This will break some make files. There is an added option that I haven't talked about, which is called bash link bash L-I-N-K. This option is used to pass any loader option that the C CC driver cannot recognize as a loader option. And this is documented in on both the CC pa man page and in the release notes. And I can't remember where else. But this is probably one of the biggest impacts customers will see. But there's 96 ways of valid loading library combinations and other options and development is adamant that they don't want to document this. Another reason why they do not want to document because they know it will change in next in later releases due to new machines and other things. Problems and other utilities. We did not find out what making the C environment to be the fault and C what it had impact on other environments until we were beta testing and how with the font mode being ANSI for CPP, there are a bunch of other processors that are not C related that uses CPP for pre-processing of its input because of changes in CPP for ANSI, this causes those other utilities to break. There are two workarounds to this. One is to set CCP options, environment variable to dash PCC, and this will work, or to change command line that invokes CPP to include dash PCC. Known affected utilities are calendar, Emacs, RPC Gen, XDM, which is X utility, and XRDB, which is also an X utility. The problems are that I know of in ANSI C, you can do pound side include. A pound sign command do not necessarily have to start in column one. So if you have pound sign include in, your in their code that's starting not in column one, in ANSI, it will include this file. Or look at the directive and say, yes, it's valid. Another problem is 
you can say x, y, z, backslash, and she defines backslash new line, say there's new, this is the end of the line, it defines backslash root new line as being eaten in PCC mode, it is, it's still left there. These are probably the two biggest problems that people will see if they're using CPT in ANSI mode, if they're preprocessing their input. And as I said, we did not find this out until we're beta testing 8.1 and C4.0 on the system. It's a good thing we found out in the house first. <laughs> because chances are, this here will probably bite more people than anything else. This is documented. These problems aren't documented, but this problem of the effects of other utilities is documented in the release notes. So it's important that people do read the release notes for 4.0. And I don't know if it's documented in the 8.1 release notes. Do you know the specific effects on XDM? Uh, XDM reads the uh, resource, the user's resource file, which does have pound sign definitions in uh, because we, because we run, on my machine, we run XDM, and we got, it's in, when I installed 4.0 as the default compiler on our, one of our machines, instantly people who are using that machine as their X server, suddenly things were breaking, and finally someone said, oh, we installed a new compiler. That's probably the problem, and it was. Uh, and it's actually, it was a hardware person who said, problems with, with XDM, new compiler, must be the new compiler, and the other software people took them several hours later to figure out that was the problem. It's things like, I think, I can't remember, but it has to do with reading the X resource file. That's probably the biggest impact with, with 4.0 and 8.1 that you will see. If you want to know more about the ANSI standard, obviously read the ANSI standard, but getting it may be hard. Another good reference for the ANSI standard is the C Programming Language Second Edition by Turner and Ritchie. Uh, we were one of the plans for 4.0 was to make a language reference manual that had the stand, had a language standard in it, but that was a goal and that did not be met. So we're going to be shipping out with each stock kit KNR2. So someone has a reference for NCC, at least one person at the site. Uh, the reference manual will have the language definition in 4.1. Uh, another good reference for uh, differences between NCC and Classic C is C, a reference manual by Herbson and Steele, second edition. Uh, on, current, on the KNR book, you need to at least get the third printing. There's been three printings. The third printing does have, has been updated to include the standard because the first two printings were printed before the standard became a standard. So you want the third printing. Other sources of doc documentation that are COMEX related, man pages for CC, CCP, and LINT, the FOO release notes, the ANCC Contest Guide, C user's guide, C language reference manual. There is a new C optimization guide that will talk about how to get the most out of your programs. And there is a positive impact document which came out with 8.0, which should also be read. You know what kind we're going to support shared modeling? Uh, I think shared libraries were not going to support, but that's a utilities question. They, they, they was planning to work on it, uh, and I haven't heard anything more about shared libraries. Uh, I think it came down to utilities wanting to implement it, but it, it came into a conflict of how we do optimization and rewrite of the compilers to support shared libraries, because you have to do things a bit differently. Thank you.